Vented roofs have been around for a long time and are a tried and tested method for achieving a long-lasting, durable, and affordable roof. However, changes in energy efficiency, performance demands, materials, and other factors have changed the way that we see these vented roofs, as many vented roof systems are experiencing issues with moisture and general performance. In this video, we're talking about how to design a better vented roof system. Let's get into it. When it comes to any vented roof, an airtight ceiling point is critical to the success of the assembly. We want every single transition, seam, penetration, and opening in that ceiling point to be as airtight as possible since we can end up getting a lot of moisture movement through air leaks, and especially since a vented attic can place the home under negative pressures if there's air leakage, and we don't want to be drawing all that warm, moisture-laden interior air towards those air leaks, otherwise we can end up seeing mold growth and energy loss. In colder climates with well-insulated and vented roofs, attic temperatures are going to be substantially colder and closer to outdoor conditions, which means that the incoming cold air can't hold as much moisture, and therefore relative humidity within the attic is going to be a lot higher since we can't effectively use venting as our primary moisture removal strategy. And so we tend to see frost on the backside of the sheathing, sheathing rot, and sweating attics when the temperatures get a little bit warmer. Something else to keep in mind is that air leakage can cause ice dams to form in colder climates with poorly insulated attics, as the heat loss from the building can warm up the underside of the sheathing sufficiently to cause the initial snow melt if there's a substantial buildup of snow, negating the benefits of a vented roof for ice dam prevention. So we have to be really methodical in our approach to air sealing a vented attic. Now in last week's video, we talked about the airtight drywall approach and how it poses some serious issues with regard to things like truss uplift cracking the drywall and ruining the air barrier. And while we can hang the drywall from strapping to prevent this from happening, let's talk about a few other better approaches to air sealing. The first approach is to install a taped smart vapor retarder membrane on the underside of the framing to provide the benefits of an air barrier and a vapor retarder with some inward drying potential. Now the smart vapor membrane allows us to tape and seal around penetrations in the ceiling plane without having to rely on the drywall layer. It's also a lot more flexible than drywall, which means it's not going to crack or fail if there's building movement. Now, we need to use this membrane in combination with a service cavity to prevent unnecessary or accidental penetrations in that smart vapor retarder. This can be accomplished with 2x3 or 2x4 strapping that's fastened through the membrane into the rafters. And don't worry, fastener penetrations aren't really a big deal since they're going to be buried in wood and compressed. Just make sure to tape over any holes from fasteners that you've had to take out. So the strapping creates a little gap where we can run electrical conduit and other services, and then we can safely attach our gypsum board to the strapping. Better yet, another option that we can use instead is to frame out ceiling joists and sheathe the top of them very similar to a floor, taping all of the joints, which not only creates an air barrier, but also creates a really nice surface cavity where we can run much larger mechanical surfaces like HVAC ductwork without having to build out an additional soffit to house the ductwork within the condition space. You also don't have to fuss around with taping recessed fixtures since they would all be located below the air barrier rather than poking through it. Then we can install our trusses or rafters over the sheathed ceiling joists like any other vented roof and insulate to the desired R value. Now, if you don't want to specify either of these options, another strategy is to install taped rigid foam insulation on the underside of the trusses, rafters, or ceiling joists. Rigid foam insulation like EPS, XPS, GPS, and polyiso can serve as effective air barriers and vapor retarders if the seams are taped, and will help to bolster the thermal resistance of the vented roof assembly, while also providing the benefits of a thermal break, preventing heat loss through the more conductive wooden components. The strategy can be especially useful in vented cathedral ceilings since insulation depth will be relatively limited. Now, just like the other strategies, a service cavity should be provided below the rigid insulation to prevent unplanned perforations in the air barrier. And this can simply be accomplished with 2 by strapping that's fastened through the rigid insulation into the roof framing. The next thing we want to ensure is that we aren't restricting airflow into the attic by blowing a whole bunch of insulation into the space. Oftentimes, we see the air intakes from the soffit vents clogged with insulation, which can seriously worsen the humidity problems within the attic since we get an accumulation of stagnant air. And this problem is even worse if we're venting a cathedral ceiling since the insulation buildup can end up filling up the entire cavity space. So we can easily address this by simply installing insulation baffles at every truss or rafter to maintain a two inch air gap for continuous air flow above the insulation layer, and that way we also don't clog up our soffit vents with insulation from wind washing. You can get these insulation baffles pretty much anywhere, and they're either composed of a thin polystyrene foam, plastic, or cardboard-like material. Now with a standard vented roof, you want to install these baffles beyond the height of the insulation buildup by a few feet just to ensure that the insulation won't blow into the baffle. However, on cathedral ceilings or vaulted ceilings, you want to make sure that the baffle extends all the way up from the soffit just shy of the ridge. 
So this continuous venting is a big deal to ensure that we're getting adequate airflow into the attic space. We want continuous soffit venting at each rafter and truss bay, especially if we're working with a cathedral ceiling in which airflow is generally more restricted so that we don't have moisture potentially stagnating at the unvented bays. And we also want a continuous ridge vent as well to facilitate airflow. It's important to note that we need more venting at the bottom around the soffits than we do at the top around the ridge. We want pressure to build up from the air entering the attic from the soffits so that we aren't depressurizing the attic and pulling air from any potential air leaks in the ceiling. Now lastly, don't locate your HVAC ductwork or air handling unit in your vented attic. This is a really bad practice that we need to stop doing, as this can lead to a lot of unnecessary energy loss, condensation on the ductwork, mold issues, corrosion, and poor indoor air quality. Locate the ductwork and the mechanicals within the conditioned space and dedicate a small mechanical room or closet to these systems and build out a soffit or two for the ductwork. These systems have to be high on the priority list and not an afterthought in the design. For more information on roof assemblies, head over to scurry-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Make sure to give this video a like if you haven't already and subscribe for more weekly building science videos. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.